Andrew, it's thrilled to be here with you, and Chris, so excited about this project and seeing episode two tonight, because I've had the chance to see episode one, but awesome. this has been exciting. Obviously, you've been in this journey for 15 years or more. More, <laughs> yeah. We did the math yesterday. It was I think we're at 18 or 19 years. Yeah. Wow. Well, now you've seen now the work of so many animators, other storytellers get involved in this process. Have there been some kind of moments of surprise as people have kind of taken your work and adapted it? No bad surprises, <laughs> only good surprises, seriously. Mm -hmm. Like it has been, it's been like, uh, it has felt more and more like I am uh, able to see the Wing Feather Saga and the story we're telling objectively and not like you're standing so close to the painting when it's, you know, I'm the author of the books, but this has been a process of moving the story away from me and you know, all these people are contributing to it and making it more than it was before, so it's just been amazing. Chris, and you've done this work of animation, bringing this to the screen now, and leading a whole team. I, there is this, you know, glut in a sense of animated films right now, CG animated films particularly. They've all had this kind of, you know, certain look to them. It seems like it's gotten kind of similar, kind of stale. Um, you have a real different hand touch kind of look and feel here. What's, what's the intent kind of behind that? That's great, yeah. I think that there was a desire from the story. Like, the story went off the page. There's footnotes, if you've read the actual book, right? Uh, and the world is bigger than what's just here. We wanted that same sense visually. And so photoreal CGI doesn't do that. All the answers are right there in every pixel on screen. And so what would it look like to have something that's more abstract, that invites the audience to imagine, to fill in details that we aren't giving them, right? And so that was the beginning of that story. Along there was these art of books, right, that we all love. What would it look like for that art to make it on screen? Does it have to go through a computer and kind of get a little antiseptic? Uh, and through the process with our good friend Keith Lango, who's our animation supervisor, came up with this amazing CG hand-painted 2D hybrid that we call Paint Motion that is just wonderful. I, I, I am as big a fan as anybody of what the team has created. Andrew, when The Hobbit came to the screen, and I think of this as kind of similar to that maybe in terms of maybe grade level and some of the whimsical kind of humor that's there. Mm. Um, you know, Hobbit went all kind of very epic drama, and the whimsical, a lot of it was lost. Mm -hmm. um, why is that sort of humor and, and curiosity, why is it important to the world of, of Air We Are and oh, man. Wing Feather Saga? I don't know, except it's just how I'm wired. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I, haven't, I grew up with this like combination of uh, you know, I'm a kid of the 80s, so I, w I come from like the Spielberg era. And so, but I grew up having real strong opinions about why Looney Tunes was better than Hanna-Barbera, you know, that kind of stuff, like just crazy stuff. I get in arguments with my friends over it, you know. And so I had these like goofy uh, opinions about like what real humor was. But I also had this real love for The Lord of the Rings and this epic sweeping adventures, any, any fantasy novel I could get my hand on, hands on with a, a sword and a tavern and a quest were like right up my alley. So this book to me is like a mashup of the two things. It's like the story starts out with a little bit of whimsy and, but there's this like depth to it that I, I really wanted to get to, you know? Um, and so, you know, there's quite a few, Harry Potter was that way. There's quite a few things that, that do that. Um, they have a little bit of cartooniness, but mm -hmm. then there's a real heart beating at the center of it. That's what I was going for. So good. You know, there is a certain level of danger and peril to this. Those the fangs of Dang, mm -hmm. they're not to be messed with. Yeah, uh, they're, they're pretty scary. Um, so some faithful people they might see this and be like, "Oh, this, you know, this is not safe for the whole family." You know, <laughs> this, uh, and and they maybe even want fantasy to be kind of a straight allegory. Mm -hmm. um, how does your approach maybe different? Than yeah, that? this is definitely not allegory. Um, I would even argue, you know, and C.S. Lewis would argue too that the Narnia books weren't allegorical. Mm -hmm. You know, they were, they're doing something different there. So like, um, I just, my goal here, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pastor's kid. So like, I grew up in the church and the quickest way to make me stop paying attention to something was to suspect that there was uh, a Sunday school lesson hidden in there somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think our guard goes up. We're, we're like story works on its own level, on its own terms. And it works, uh, m mystery is part of the medium, right? And so, um, like, if C.S. Lewis said, you know, if you want to sneak the truth past people's watchful dragons, a story is the best way to do it. So you have to just honor the fact that it's a story first. And so I wanted to just tell a great story. And as a Christian, I wanted to trust the Holy Spirit to do what he would with that. And I will tell you, too, I... I I had seen behaviorally with VeggieTales, lots of families come in and say, what kind of things do you want for your kids? Well, aspirationally, I want vitamins and I only want green things, right? 
So what do you kids eat? Corn dogs, right? Like the actual consumption is different than what people may aspire to. So I, lots of families, our own family, we want only good things for our family, but we're watching this thing on whatever. And I think that increasingly kids have that choice. Kids have the remote. So I don't care what mom or grandpa wants that kid to watch. The kid's going to choose. If we don't earn their eyeballs with a great story, there's no hope of, of, of pulling them along, right? Because mom or dad can only force so many things. You know, sit down, you're going to watch this good thing for you. Because you can tell mm -hmm. there's probably going to be a lesson in this thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So the, the fangs of dang being hideous, that's part of it. It's pulling them in, in a sense. Sure. It is. It's pulling yeah. them in. And the, the world is full of peril. I'm sorry. But there are t dark and terrible things. And we want to be age appropriate, right? We, want, we don't want to use that in gratuitous ways. But we also don't want to shy from the, the fact that life is perilous. And there are mm -hmm. things that happen in our journeys that can be scary and alarming. And so One of my favorite quotes is from, uh, it's like a... G.K. Chesterton said the first version of this quote, and then it got kind of morphed along, uh, over the years. But the idea that uh, fairy tales don't teach children that dragons exist, fairy tales teach children that dragons can be beaten. Hmm. So it allows you to kind of say, we're going to tell the truth in this story. And the truth is people die, and that the world is broken. And the truth is also that even the best heroes have flaws, right? Hmm. Um, there's only one hero who is flawless. And so we want to acknowledge that, those truths in the story and by doing so, demonstrate that the light is actually stronger. Well, last question. Your kids have kind of you know, seen you act out this story for 18 years, I guess, <laughs> um, and had seen various iterations of it. Um, curious what has been their response as they've seen this getting bigger and bigger and now coming to the screen. Yeah, they're, they're having a ball with it. They're loving it. Um, one of the sweet things about it is that my son Aiden, the, my oldest son, is a visual artist and he actually got hired by the art director to be one of the background painters for the show. So he and his wife both work on the show. So it's just super cool that they grew up with this, you know, their old man telling these stories at night and, and now he's getting to be on the team who's bringing it to the screen. So great. Well, is that it for tonight? Thank you. Thank Andrew. you. Thank you so good to talk to you. <laughs> My pleasure. Yeah, man, I appreciate it.